Alex, please take it away. Hi, welcome. Thank you for joining me for 5G plus 4D equals AI new reality. I want to thank AWE for having me speak. And I'm here today to talk to you about connectivity and realism for digital media. 5G is a really fantastic change in our accessibility to the internet, to this greater communication. And it enables a lot of things that have been really hard to come by. Uh, up until now. And I'm going to talk to you today about how we're leveraging it in media to actually create volumetric or 4D video. Uh, if you think about rural areas that don't have accessibility, or even downtown Los Angeles, where you're just in a building that cannot have a great Wi-Fi signal, that's what we're combating. I'm Alex Porter. I am the founder and CEO of Montec Labs. I've been in the XR space for the last four years, creating tools for businesses um, with our previous company. I'm a serial entrepreneur. And now uh, we are Montec Labs, uh, a venture-backed startup focused on creating productivity tools for production studios. So we have an automated pipeline that we're going to talk to you more about today and how we're leveraging all of these technologies to make it easier for people to create media. The core of Montech Labs is that we are 98% faster processing. We actually use something called CQ processing. That's our own term. Uh, it's cluster-based queued processing, which eliminates the bottlenecks from traditional processing. We are a private cloud, very secure, uh, and we are actually using automated systems. So automated means it's one click. It's super easy for users to access. We have a universal input from any type of camera and universal output to any program or any, uh, any type of platform. So really we're leveraging the opportunity for creation of volumetric holographic videos, digital humans, and how we can bring those uh, into the world. What we're focused on, as I mentioned, is the production pipeline. So the VFX process is these nine steps, everything from pre-vis to color grading. This takes 2,000 people per movie and a quarter of a movie budget. So on a standard $150 million movie, we're talking almost $40 million dedicated to VFX and animation. Right now, we are leveraging AI to overcome some of those bottlenecks and the need for such large teams by doing it within this pipeline. So everything in green is already automated in our pipeline. And everything except the shoot is what we're aiming to create over the next five years. 5G for capture really allows the best of both worlds, from locations that have limited data access um, to doing short tests. So one of the premises of volumetric video is that you are actually capturing an asset from an array of cameras. So you've probably seen the dome captures, you've seen various different kinds of capture technology. Um, and ultimately what that means is that you still don't really know what you're getting until you process it. So a good, a good use case um, here actually uses a rig that we created. It was 104 cameras and 26 small form factor computers. This is a dedicated sound stage. And this particular rig actually uh, the output was not ideal, and part of that was that we were unable at the time to calibrate our cameras and to test on site. I'd love to show you a little bit more of the rig itself. This was built to capture in a very large space with the least barriers. So it's omnidirectional. The user can actually, or the performer, can actually look into any direction while they're being captured. And the goal of this camera, this camera was actually to bring down the cost. So these are web cameras um, and small board cameras that we used. And this rig in and of itself costs uh, just a few thousand dollars. So I'd love to share a better use case. If you think about a client shoot in an office, especially right now, while we're all staying home, staying safe, keeping healthy. What are the options 
for capturing people out in the world, out in their own homes where they're safe. The reality is bringing camera rigs to them is probably the best bet. Um, this particular one was a 24 camera rig that we set up in this small office. And the great thing here is you could upload this via hotspot, even while you're driving, you could turn it around in just minutes um, to test it. Uh, so the fast remote testing for this 24 cameras means that you really understand what you're getting out of your shoot. Best use case. This was another great uh, small studio uh, that where we use the same 24 camera rig. We were actually capturing physical VFX makeup here um, to see what the use case was in, in movies, right? Um, how can you reuse these assets? How can you put them into XR games? How can you create opportunity from just one asset and really stretch the use case of the asset? The opportunity is really just astounding how much we'll, we'll really be able to do um, when 5G is more prolific. So 5G for transfer. It speeds up transfer and it's less likely um, to create issues. The drop tightens up and the transfer ping with Wi-Fi is typically about 14 milliseconds between pings, while 5G has less than a millisecond between pings. Better connectivity through denser surfaces. This is going to really enable us to do more in more places. Companies always don't always have internet connection or consistent internet connection. In this case, this studio, uh, St. Elmo's, they actually are in an industrial complex uh, and they have a lot of electrical systems that are interfering with the internet connectivity. So being able to actually transfer the data onto different computers, transfer the data to the servers to actually process, all of these things can cause issues. So this allows for calibration and testing on site, as I mentioned, short frame tests for understanding not only you know, how great the asset is being captured, but what the lighting looks like, what the consistency is, the sheen and the depth segmentation, the time consistency, all those things are really important. This is an example of a bad calibration. So this gentleman here, uh, you'll actually look around his head for, and uh, the, the calibration was a lack of connectivity. This is something that can be overcome by utilizing 5G networks. What is the point of having a head rig? Um, you see that we're only having 24 cameras in a couple of these shoots. And, you know, what do you do with that? What do you do with just uh, a bodiless head? Well, we've actually actually experimented with this and we have created some opportunities to use this in existing pipelines um, with motion captured bodies, with photogrammetry captured bodies. These are all technical things that people are already very well used to using. Um, the great thing about volumetric heads is that you are capturing millions of points on the face versus a motion capture facial rig, which captures about 126 points on a high-end rig. The optimal shoot uh, is really about portability, as we mentioned. So if you can capture that person's head, you can capture their body separately and have the fidelity of photogrammetry of capturing them in a still pose with their body. Then you can actually connect them digitally and reuse that in a multitude of ways. The other thing is the data footprint is massively smaller. If you're capturing a head, we're talking about 20 gigabyte. If you're capturing an entire full body, not only do you need the physical floor space, but you are dealing with 108 gigabytes per minute, which is insane amounts of data to deal with. This is Jim. Jim is our prime example of a motion capture body and a volumetric head. As you can see, his facial fidelity is really high. He looks great. He's actually speaking his line. His body was captured with photogrammetry and this is just a rig that we happen to put on him. And in this instance, he's doing this sort of expressive talking with his arms failing. We have actually used that in a multitude of ways. We put him into a virtual reality therapy experience as a fifth level to welcome people who have gone through the journey of overcoming their fear of heights to the final level in which they're actually interacting with not only a realistic human, but also 
a, a realistic environment. So a captured uh, castle in this case is what we used. Uh, and the thing, the thing that we wanted to do there was just create the opportunity for people to come full circle, starting off in a very cartoony world and ending up in a very realistic world. The goal with all of this is to bring more realism into this digital medium. This allows for you to separately drive the body and facial animations. And we're in the R&D phase with this to some extent. As I mentioned, we've implemented it in uh, a couple of different use cases. And we think that there are a lot more great, wonderful use cases coming up soon. So let's talk, let's get down to the nitty gritty about what it looks like to have unoptimized and optimized assets and what kind of data you're playing with there. Uh, beforehand, this was before this went through an optimization pass. As you can see, the polygons are quite messy. The textures are quite messy. Um, the maps are all over the place, uh, just crisscross. And the final asset is just not as high quality as one would like. This is really just the top left, or this one has millions of polygons. And the UV map, the textures uh, across the bottom, uh, it's baked lighting. So after we put it through an optimization pass, this is what we're looking at. We're looking at very clean meshes, very clean UV maps, and a much more high fidelity asset. And this head can be attached to a body and used for lots of opportunities. This is the technique we call temporal preservation. As you can see, this is Jim's head. We're gonna show, him, show some of the maps in action. Uh, this is actually shown on Sketchfab which you can access our library of assets uh, there for viewing, uh, sketchfab.com slash Montech Labs. And there, many of the assets actually look similar, so to speak, but we've done a lot of um, testing and techniques around how to use the same asset and change the fidelity with different options. So as I mentioned, uh, temporal preservation, we also have temporal consistency. These maintain the texture and the mesh data over time, which massively decreases the data footprint. Thank you for your time. I look forward to hearing any questions or comments that you may have. If you want to get in touch with me, here are my, my info, and I look forward to your questions. Thank you. Alex, thank you very much. Uh, very uh, interesting presentation that you've given uh, based on research and uh, real applications uh, going into the real world. Uh, I, I see it really as a, an overall immersive experience that you're putting out there. Uh, you talk a lot about costs and uh, accessibility going into the home. Uh, could you expand a little bit more then in terms of um, if, if I wanted to uh, play with this? Uh, you know, what kind of costs might be involved? Uh, equipment, uh, hardware, software? Yeah, thank you, Kathy. Absolutely. Um, for home-based use, we're not fully supporting that yet. We are actually creating a sort of um, streamer kit, if you will. Um, so we're working on and creating that opportunity for audiences like you um, that want to experiment with this at home themselves. Um, in regard to cost, uh, the rigs typically, we're actually looking at uh, real sense cameras. So off the shelf equipment, very accessible. Some of the rigs that we have created do use webcams, as I mentioned. And so webcams uh, are actually, they're at a premium right now. <laughs> Uh, but typically, uh, back when we bought the rigs, they were about $70 each. Um, and that, that 180 bust rig um, was under $1,000 for the cost of the cameras and the cost of the computer. It was actually an old computer from 2012. Um, that when we did our initial tests, uh, we are going all the way up to sort of prosumer grade where we're using other off the shelf equipment and then augmenting that with the ability to store data and process the data. So the way that we're really um, addressing the cost for that is by creating our tool, which is a SaaS platform. So you access it from the web, um, you upload your imagery data, it processes within our systems and then you download your data. And cost-wise for photogrammetry assets, we're anywhere between $75 and $500. It depends on the optimization levels um, and what you're looking at there. And for volumetric video, somewhere between $3,000 per minute 
up to $6,000 per minute. And again, that varies based on the types of processes that it's going through. Optimization is a much longer, lengthier process. Um, and so it, it does tend to be on the more expensive side, but there are lots of great use cases sort of in between. And on the, on the professional side, of course, you would be definitely on the high end for that. Uh, movies, for instance, um, we are definitely working in the movie arena and they need very, very high end assets. So uh, it's, it's widely varying um, depending on what your output needs to look like. But ultimately, our cost uh, model is that you have your own equipment or we can help you create rigs with existing equipment. And from there, we take over the processing side so you don't have to have that infrastructure cost. Very cool. Thank you. Um, you talk a lot about volumetric data, which essentially huge, huge volumes of data that are constantly being generated, especially from a 3D to a 4D and beyond. Uh, can you talk a little bit about um, uh, the demands or challenges uh, towards reliability then? Reliability in what sense? Uh, like uh, uh, where you'll be so dependent on the network, right? You talk about uh, 5G, but it's not quite yes. there yet. Um, the it's overall true. infrastructure, uh, uh, that's yeah, what I mean. Absolutely. Absolutely. We are really um, waiting for that full launch. <laughs> Um, we know that during this this sort of downtime in the world, um, there have been a lot more 5G systems implemented. Um, that has actually been a focus of some large corporations that are taking that that out into the world. Um, and until until such time as that is a broad and wide availability, um, you do need to rely on systems that are a little bit more dependent, right? And so it's a lot of hardwiring. So it's sort of like back in the internet days, you're going back to ethernet instead of Wi-Fi. Um, we're still on ethernet mostly. <laughs> we have to be we have to be plugged in with all of our networking systems. Um, they have to be hardwired. Um, and ultimately the way that the SaaS platform answers some of that issues is that you can take all that shoot data all that massive, massive amounts of data. Um, and because we have a private cloud, we're not relying on, you know, AWS, et cetera. That's why our, one of the reasons our price point can be so much lower um, because it comes directly to our systems through secure uplink to our physical servers. Um, and we can process them in that way and then allow you to ex access them again through the cloud, cloud-based system, private cloud-based system. Um, and really at that, at this point, those are kind of the systems we're reliant on, but we are very excited for the full launch of 5G. <laughs> as we all are right now, and as long as people aren't burning down the current 5G infrastructure. So yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, last question I, I wanted uh, on a personal note, uh, it sounds like you've got some daughters and um, you've had a varied background and I just love um, the education path that you took um, and I love to mentor uh, 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 and advance uh, uh, people, uh, in particular, um, you know, uh, women uh, and minorities. But uh, can you just like share maybe some of your life experiences and uh, what one that is just going into school now or young professionals or, or even a professional that's thinking about a career change? Uh, uh, you know, what kind of opportunities and, and what recommendations would you have? Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of it is really having the ability to tap into mentors, right? Tap into people that can really teach you and bring you into the world that you're interested in. I am actually a, a large proponent of internships, apprenticeships, sort of that old model that has, has gone away um, and learning technical skills and understanding them with a practitioner uh, that can teach you firsthand. I think that that is a very valuable model. Um, and we ourselves um, are actually looking for interns and hiring right now uh, and growing our business. And that's, that's a core value for us is to share our knowledge and make things more accessible. And in regard to my own experiences, uh, really, this was not a path that I anticipated for myself. Uh, it's been a wonderful path. Uh, it has been really fun and interesting. Actually, 
Um, my, my husband, my CTO, when we got married, he told me you'll never be bored. And he has <laughs> kept true to that promise. <laughs> we, we have never been bored. And uh, it's been a really fun adventure more than anything. We've gotten, uh, I've gotten to use a lot of my background in interior design. I've gotten to use a lot of my background in, you know, family and child services where I can actually use that people element to just connect, right? Because business is actually not business, it's relationships. How do you create relationships of meaning where you can exchange information, knowledge, monetary, you know, gain sometimes? Uh, there's a lot of opportunity out there. And I think really approaching it like that, you know, what can I give and what can I receive? And I think that that's a huge underlying uh, principle for me. That That's really great. I, I'm very thankful that you shared uh, what your thoughts and, and recommendations and advice. Uh, I call it a journey, right? Every, uh, you just take one step at a time and and really just have to have, to have fun. So um, again, I want to thank you, uh, Alex uh, Porter, um, really great talk and uh, look forward to seeing more successes from, from your company. With that, uh, that concludes our session. Thank you.